What's going on AP world people? We are back with video number six, topic 1.6. This one is going to focus on Europe during the Middle Ages. Lots of info to get to, so let's get going. All right, timeline of the Middle Ages you should be familiar with. It really begins in 476 CE with the fall of Rome. By, 11, by 1000 CE, we have the early Middle Ages. and 1450 CE, we have the later Middle Ages. All right, some early Middle Ages info you should be familiar with. This really occurs from 476 to 1000 CE, and we have a less centralized government. Do me a favor and star circle this bullet for me, please. Know that government was very decentralized or not very powerful across a long distance. Early Middle Ages, the Carolinian dynasty. Well, we have Charles Martel. He's going to defeat Muslims at the Battle of Tours in 732 CE. And this is really going to keep Islam from spreading into Europe beyond Spain. This is a turning point in European history. And this is why we don't see Islam spreading to Europe except for really Spain. Charlemagne from 768 to 814 was named emperor by the Pope in 800. And here he is being crowned emperor. And he had a series of regional administrators to rule his empire. And this is similar to a lot throughout history, especially satraps in the ancient Persian Empire. All right, let's jump over to feudalism, something you should be very familiar with. No aspects of this. Be able to write about it if you see it as a short answer question or an essay. We have the social structure of feudalism and vassals are those that owed service to others. So an example of a vassal could be a knight. It could be a noble who owes service to a king, a knight who owes service to a noble, you name it. It's all about relationships and those that owe service to others. A noble is a vassal to a king, and a knight is also a vassal to a noble, as I just mentioned. Now, feudalism is all about land. Those who have, have land and own it really control a lot and have a lot of power. A king will give a fief or land to lords in exchange for support. So lords had tremendous power. They were in their manners, which we'll talk about, the law enforcement, the judge and jury in many areas. And knights followed a code of chivalry, which was very similar to, come on, you know this in Japan, the code of Bushido. Look at you, you little genius. You know what you're doing. The manorial system or manoralism, be familiar with. Manners were often self-sufficient, which meant everything could be found within the manor that was needed. The church was often at the center of the manor. And there was also a blacksmith as well to make weapons and other goods that were needed. There's a mill that would be used to store food and homes for serfs and serfs would be tied to the land. Do me a favor and circle serfs dash tied to the land. So if you were a serf, you would be tied to that land, to that manor system for your entire life, as would your children because serfs are hereditary and they will pay tribute to lords. And again, their children would be subject to the same bit of land. So even if lords changed in a manner, serfs would still be tied to that land. Now, the three field system was popular in the manor system. Crops were rotated in three different fields to keep the crops growing properly. One was usually for wheat or rye for food. One was for legumes, which would fertilize the land. And one was often left empty. And these would be rotated each year. Plows helped break soil to cultivate the land. And stirrups from China allowed horse riding to be easier. So we see some cultural diffusion from China to Europe. Now we have the emergence of vernacular languages. What do I mean by that? Well, French, Italian, and Spanish, these were more common than Latin. And this is why we see Latin begin to die out. Latin was used mostly by elites and vernacular was used by common people. So over time, Latin is going to be used less and less and languages such as French, Italian, and Spanish will be used more and more. So social classes in Europe, there's more social mobility in Europe than under the Hindu caste system. If you remember the Hindu caste system, where you are born is where you will stay. And knights could receive multiple fiefs and have squires. So knights could acquire more wealth and power as time went on. And there was upward mobility for priests in the Catholic Church, as we'll see in just a little bit. So the Roman Catholic Church was very influential during the Middle Ages, perhaps the most powerful institution. Most people were illiterate and church officials were literate. So they were ones who were able to spread news and information to people. 
The first universities in Europe were established by the Catholic Church, and artwork during this time focused on religious themes, so it reinforced the importance of religion during the Middle Ages. So the Roman Catholic Church at the top, we have the Pope, then underneath the Pope we have bishops who pledge allegiance to the Pope, and then you have priests who are supervised by bishops, and missionaries will help spread Christianity throughout Europe as well. So let's talk about political structures. Jumping over to France during the Middle Ages, we have the States General, which is representatives from three estates. The first estate is the clergy, second estate is the nobility, and the third estate is the commoners, or pretty much everyone else. Each estate had one vote. However, the first two always voted together, the clergy and the nobility, thus outnumbering the larger amounts of people that made up the commoners. This would become an issue during the French Revolution, which we'll get to in a later time period. Now, political structures in England, we have the Magna Carta in 1215 CE. Please star this bad boy for me. This required the king to observe rights such as trial for nobles, so the king could not just imprison nobles without a trial. And then in 1265, we have the first English parliament made up of the House of Lords for the nobles and clergy and the House of Commons for wealthy townspeople. And these are two early democratic institutions that will help influence future governments, especially the United States. All right, the High Middle Ages, 1000 CE is when this began, and we see increased trade with other regions. So we begin to see kind of moving away from these Dark Ages and more increased involvement, not just in Europe, but in other areas as well. We also see joust in tournaments because there's not a lot of wars going on. So knights, instead of fighting, would participate in jousts and tournaments. All right, we'll end with a quick recap. We have the fall of Rome, in the, that's the early Middle Ages. Social classes and feudalism, know them. Chivalry, similar to the Code of Bushido. Menoralism, be able to explain in detail the typical manner, characteristics of the manner. Power of the Roman Catholic Church, the States General in France, and the Magna Carta in England. All right, guys, look forward to seeing you back here for video number seven, topic 1.7, the last video in period one. Thanks for watching. Best of luck on all your exams, especially the one in May, and have a good day.